a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting what has been planted, a time for killing, a time for healing, a time for knocking down, a time of, for building, a time for tears, a time for laughter, a time of, for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones away, a time for gathering them up, a time for embracing, a time for, to refrain from embracing, a time for searching, a time for losing, a time for keeping, a time for throwing away, a time for tearing, a time for sowing, a time for keeping silent, a time for speaking, a time for loving, a time for hating, a time for war, a time for peace. What does a man gain for the effort that he makes? I contemplate the task that God gives mankind to labor at. All that he does is apt for its time. But though he has permitted man to consider time in his wholeness, man cannot comprehend the work of God from beginning to end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response for the psalm is, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. He is my love, my fortress. He is my stronghold, my savior, my shield, my place of refuge. Blessed, Blessed, be, Blessed the be the Lord, Lord my rock. Lord, what is man that you care for him? Mortal man that you keep him in mind. Man who is merely a breath, whose life fades like a passing shadow. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Please send for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his God holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day when Jesus was praying alone in the presence of his disciples, he put this question to them. Who do the crowds say I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, others Elijah, and others say one of the ancient prophets come back to life. But you, he said, who do you say that I am? It was Peter who spoke up, the Christ of God, he said. But he gave them strict orders not to tell anyone anything about this. The Son of Man, he said, is destined to suffer grievously, to be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and to be put to death, and to be raised up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus uh, predicts his awful death on the cross. He came to us with a message of hope, a message of good news. He healed the sick. He helped the poor. He gave comfort to the sorrow, to the sorrowful. And he promises to show love and kindness and compassion to all people. So why did he have to die? Why did he die? Well, he also came with a difficult message. 
He came to hold people to account for their sins. He called people to repent and to change their way of life. His first words in the Gospel of Mark, repent and believe the good news. And for this, people didn't like him. For no price, he offered them healing and forgiveness, but they turned their backs on him. He loved them with an unending love and prayed for them continually, but they despised him. He promised them a place in his father's house but they rejected him. If the Son of Man were to return again today, would he be welcomed by the world? Would the world treat him any differently to the way it did then? I wonder what might Jesus say about the state of the world. In this country alone, over 14.5 million people live in poverty. Since 1967, this country alone has aborted nine and a half million babies. Today, in the UK, there are estimated to be over 130,000 slaves. And in his latest BBC programme, David, Sir David Attenborough is telling us that human activity through materialism and consumerism is destroying our planet, polluting our oceans, cutting down our rainforests. And what do we hear people say all the time? This is progress. Get with it. This is the 21st century. God, the church is so old fashioned, so out of date. If the Son of Man were to return again today, would he be welcomed by the world? But we must never forget this. He loves us. He wants the best for us. And he willingly embraced death in order to show his commitment to that promise to the very end. He may have died on the cross, but his love for us is undying. Will we welcome him when he comes?